Hello everyone, this is week 12 of um, the ENM 2020 online course that is led by uh, Town Peterson. Um, today, uh, or my talk, um, will be about georeferencing occurrence data. And that is uh, my task um, related to the, the previous two topics uh, from, uh, from last week, the overview that Town provided on occurrence data and then the sources of data that uh, John uh, mentioned or presented um, last week. So this is a very important topic, um, the georeferencing of occurrence data. A lot of us probably have been uh, use, using or have seen um, GBIF data that already has um, latitude and longitude and maybe uh, some of us didn't didn't wonder how how those uh, those coordinates uh, were assigned to uh, to those um, localities or those records of species presence. So today we are going to try to um, briefly go over how this is done, the georeferencing of current data. Okay, so I mentioned uh, Down and John's um, the the two talks that they they provided uh, last week. So if you recall town um, among the um, considerations uh, he presented uh, regarding occurrence data, uh, he talked about um, errors related to uh, species being um, recorded at wrong, wrong sites, knowing about the species uh, biology, uh, we, can, we can identify um, locations, for example, GBIF records that are not that are not accurate or are not correct for, for a particular species. Uh, Tan also mentioned that um, the latitude and longitude or the, um, the coordinates provided uh, sometimes have, are not precise enough and they are, not, uh, they are basically too coarse to be, uh, to be used with uh, high resolution um, environmental data. And that's, uh, that's something that that is important to, to consider how precise are, are our uh, occurrences or the, the coordinates of our, our records. And John also mentioned the uncertainty of, uh, of these records and how the, uh, the uncertainty of a record can actually be uh, higher or larger than the uh, rain or the resolution of the environmental data. So these are um, issues, very important issues to consider when, when we compile data from online uh, distributed uh, databases or when we compile ourselves data from uh, various uh, sources. So to connect to uh, John's talk, um, he um, used this terminology, realistic full georeference. Uh, when, when describing the types of data or the characteristics of uh, records that are found in GBIF. And uh, initially, when we, uh, when we see the, the, the big picture, the um, overview of GBIF records, um, I think over 90% uh, have some form of uh, latitude and longitude. But then uh, when we apply this, a uh, more specific, realistic, full georeference approach to analyzing the GBIF records. Um, I think in John's talk, the percentage uh, of GBIF records that have realistic full georeference dropped to about uh, 42%. So um, John explained that by realistic full georeference, we mean that the records, uh, species records have latitude and longitude, uh, but also uncertainty associated with with that latitude longitude and the datum uh, for the latitude and longitude uh, is specified. So what I would like to do next is talk about uncertainty, try to understand what is this uncertainty. And um, to do that, I am using uh, an example. We're gonna look at an ex example of a specimen and its locality data and understand um, that way the sources of uncertainty or what is uncertainty um, in uh, relation to this particular locality description. I'm using, um, I have as resources, I'm using a, a georeferencing guide 
that is available online. Um, and there will also, there is a georeferencing best practices manual that um, is being revised uh, by John and colleagues. And it will be, um, it will be available on GB uh, probably end of spring or, or summer. So these are long, many years of uh, long uh, projects, many years of work that um, John and, and uh, a, large, uh, a large group of, uh, of researchers um, have developed these uh, georeferencing guidelines. So back to our example. So you see a, a specimen that I that I prepared when I was a long time ago when I was in grad school. Um, and um, I didn't prepare too many specimens. This is one of the few. <laughs> it doesn't look too great. But um, the spe this particular uh, specimen was the bird or the specimen was uh, given to us by someone who um, found it, it was a, a window kill. So found the bird dead and then uh, um, collected it or retrieved it and then um, donated it to the museum. So the, the person who um, gave us the, spe the uh, specimen, the bird, provided this locality description. So the, the bird was collected in USA, in the state of Georgia, in the town of Augusta, and then on Wills, Willis Road, uh, about 0.5 miles south of Gordon Highway. So we know there is a highway, and that on we, um, that south of that highway there is a, a road, or at least this this uh, locality description explains that there is a road, and that the the, um, the bird was collected 0.5 miles south on that road, south of Gordon Highway. So obviously, it would have been good to have um, GPS coordinates to have this collector could have um, um, recorded GPS coordinates, but we don't have that. So we still wanna use this, this, uh, this specimen. So the, what we have to do is um, assign latitude and longitude to this locality description, and also calculate what is the uncertainty of our assigning of latitude and longitude to this uh, locality description. Okay, so, uh, everything happens <laughs> happens on Google. So if we use just Google Maps, um, we can find this this particular town, Augusta, and then we can actually find that uh, that uh, Willis Road. And uh, what I did is I calculated I not calculated, but I measured uh, 0.5 miles on this uh, Willis Road, and we see that it's south of this highway, uh, the Gordon Highway. So, so the bird was, uh, it was a window kill, so the bird um, died somewhere here. And then again, the collector uh, made the note that it was 0.5 miles on this road, uh, Willis Road, uh, 0.5 miles south of Gordon uh, Highway. So uh, on Google Maps, I got the, um, I found, I measured that 0.5 miles, and then I got the coordinates for that particular for that uh, location, uh, uh, 0.5 miles um, on Willis Road. Okay, so I have latitude and longitude now for this specimen. Um, but then the question is, how? What's the uncertainty associated with what I just did? And the first, um, just hunch, <laughs> or looking at the at, at the process of what I did, um, we will. We can assume that the, the uncertainty is probably or possibly low because we have a, um, a quite a um, precise description of the of the location, and um, and we didn't have to calculate uh, too many things. But um, we do want to measure this uncertainty, not just say, "Well, I think it's low uncertainty." Uh, we should try to measure this uh, this uncertainty. So in order to measure the uncertainty, we have to assess what kind of um, sources of error uh, we have with this process of, first of all, the locality description, and then me doing this on, on uh, Google Maps. So a first source of error is 
my, my ability to trace 0.5 miles on the map. Um, and then the collector's um, ability to measure, uh, to measure that 0.5 miles. And we are assuming that this was, um, this was done by, by car. Now, if, if the locality, so we feel pretty good about this, um, and I will explain how, how we actually provide a, a measure of un, uh, uncertainty. And now we, we are just talking about these uh, possible sources of error. Now, if, we, if, the, if the locality description would have been uh, slightly different, so um, this first scenario of locality description where we have the country, the state, and then the town. In this, in this situation, the sources of error are different. So we don't have distance anymore. We don't have, I'm not tracing anything. But now um, we don't know where in Augusta this, this bird was collected. And there's also the issue of what is Augusta? How big is this town? So we don't know where in this town. And we also have to have to decide how big is this error? How big is this town? Um, where in, uh, in this town the bird was collected? Now, if, of course, rarely bird <laughs> specimens are collected, uh, animals are collected in towns um, or in cities. So usually um, collections happen. Uh, this, like I said, this was a, a bird that hit the window. Uh, usually collections happen more uh, more organized and outside of uh, populated places. So uh, another possi possible description is a distance from, from a location. So if we change our, our uh, locality description to country, uh, state, Georgia, town, Augusta, and then five miles north, then the sources of error are slightly different. We still don't know what is the, we still have to figure out what is the extent of Augusta of this town. Um, because we are calculating a distance from, from, this, uh, from this town. Um, then we, we have the error of uh, related to um, or associated with the precision of distance, uh, that measurement of five miles, and then the uh, precision of direction. So the, the specimen in this hypothetical example was collected five miles north. Um, when we have this, this type of precision of direction, just uh, one cardinal direction north, we actually don't know where, where, in, where north. <laughs> um, we just know that it was not south or west or east. Um, the precision increases, the direction precision increases when we have uh, more information about a narrower uh, angle um, of direction for that. For that uh, Location. So if we have five miles north northeast, all of a sudden we have a, a, a narrower um, error um, and a higher precision uh, of, this, um, of this locality description. Okay, so if we, if we are to define what is uncertainty, uh, we can say that uncertainty takes into account all possible sources of error associated with uh, a locality description and our interpretation or parsing of that, of that information. So every time we, we assign coordinates to that locality description, we make some um, estimation of error, of possible sources of error associated with that, uh, with that locality description. And then we provide, the, we, we provide or we want a specific a measurement of that uncertainty. We, we know it's a combination of those sources of error, but we want to, to quantify that, those sources of error in, a, in just one uh, overall measurement. And um, the one approach that uh, has been used um, for the past 20 years, has been developed for the past 20 years, is a maximum error distance between what probably what is the true location of that, of that uh, specimen or of that collection, collection event, collecting event, and then the latitude and longitude that we assign to that locality description. So we do our best <laughs> to, assign a locality, to assign latitude and longitude to a locality description, but we want to know how far off are we from the true 
um, locality, the true latitude, what were the true latitude and longitude of, um, of that location where the specimen was collected or the bird was observed or um, a survey was, uh, was done. So uh, we calculate this uh, maximum error uh, distance uh, based on all uh, possible sources of error associated with the, with the locality description. And we don't do that, thankfully, <laughs> we don't do that uh, manually. There is a georeferencing uh, calculator that John developed over the years. Uh, I used it in grad school. Um, I think I started using it uh, probably 2002 <laughs> or 2003. Um, so uh, it has been a, a very trusty, <laughs> trustworthy and very close friend for, for a long time, the georeferencing calculator. Okay, so it's an online, it's an online um, application, and uh, I'm not going to go to the um, to the website, uh, but I did save some screenshots. So the this is how the georeferencing calculator uh, looks uh, online. You see the link over there. Uh, I mean the uh, address over there, and I provided the link also over here at the um, bottom of the slide. So this is the, the interface that you see when you go on the, on the georeferencing calculator website. So the, the first thing, uh, well, I should mention, very important, there is a georeferencing calculator manual. So click on that before you do anything else and spend a few days on that um, manual and um, then, then proceed, to <laughs> proceed to using the calculator. So I'm going to just illustrate how we would use the calculator for um, for that particular uh, locality description that, that I'm using. Um, so this is the locality description, again, is um, a distance uh, on a road. So when, when we get to the georeferencing calculator, we have the, there's a drop down menu here. Um, and then when you, uh, when you click on that drop down menu, you'll see these uh, possible types of localities. So, uh, what happens is you you have to choose based on the uh, locality that you are trying to georeference. You you have to choose uh, one of these uh, possible uh, types of uh, locality description. So again, ours is a distance along a path. So once we select that, uh, you, there is no there are no um, options until you select the locality type. So once you choose the locality type, there will be a bunch of uh, options or parameters that that you have to fill out, and then um, then we once we have the parameters um, uh, assigned, then we can hit calculate, and we will we will um, the georeferencing calculator will provide um, the measure of uncertainty. So just briefly, what I did is uh, remember I used Google Maps for coordinates. Um, so I, I put here um, as coordinate source the Google Map, uh, Google Earth, or Google Maps after 2008. Then I, I used uh, a decimal degrees, so um, that's the coordinate format that I selected. You see that there are drop-down menus here, so you can um, the coordinate source. Um, the coordinate sources are quite um, varied. It can be a, a paper gazetteer. It can be a map, um, and then the scale of the map has to be has to be provided. So um, the drop-down menu is quite uh, quite um, comprehensive. And then the coordinate format: um, some co some coordinates can be in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, so on, so far degrees, decimal minutes. Anyways, I have decimal degrees. And then the datum for the for the Google Map is uh, WGS eighty four. And then I have this. Uh, for uh, for decimal precision of the of the latitude and longitude, I um, since I um, calculate since I um, I measured a distance along a road uh, over here on Google Maps, I did not uh, use a radius of feature, and I will explain what that radius of feature is. But because I'm I'm not um, I'm not Using an entire town or an entire feature, uh, I put the radial uh, radial of feature as uh, at zero. Measurement error 
I assumed that when I was measuring 0.5, I might have um, been um, I, I might have made uh, an error of up to 0.1. I only measured 0.5 miles, so 0.1 is probably okay. And then the precision, I, I put it also at uh, uh, 0.1, basically one over 10 miles. And the distance I, I measured obviously in miles because the, um, the locality des description was in, uh, in miles, the distance was in miles. So anyway, so we, we input these uh, parameters and then we, cli uh, we click, or, um, click on calculate. So then what you see here is the uncertainty that the calculator um, generated based on the parameters that I provided, the locality description, uh, coordinates, uh, precision, datum, um, measurement error, so on and so forth. So as we suspected, this, um, this particular locality description, description is, um, is pretty good. Uh, the uncertainty is uh, pretty low. It's quite low, um, 264 meters or 0.2 kilometers. Now, if we go back to one of the um, modified or hypothetical uh, locality descriptions, so if the locality description was less detailed um, and it had just, um, again, the, state, the um, country, state, um, uh, sorry, a named place or town, Augusta, and then five miles north. So in that case, the georeferencing calculator looks different because now I have a distance, um, a distance type locality. And see, this is uh, by air because we don't know which road it was used. So we are now, uh, we are now going in a straight direction as the crow flies um, in uh, five miles north. Um, I still have, this, I still, I did use, uh, again, uh, Google Earth Maps, uh, Google, sorry, Google Maps for my coordinates. I still have decimal degrees. The coordinates are slightly different because I use now the approximate center of the town. So this approximate center of the town is uh, quite, it's not a pretty um, georeference that I, do, I did here. So it's not a perfect circle. It should be a nice perfect circle. And I estimated the extent, I approximated the extent of Augusta. So I, I saw that it was North Augusta there, uh, but then basically I went um, where, uh, where the next locality uh, na named place um, appeared, uh, I stopped. So, I created an approximate, first of all, it's not a, it's not a pretty circle, but an approximate <laughs> a shape, a, a shape approximation, approximating a circle. And then I have the center uh, and the coordinates uh, are for that, for that center of the, um, of the circle. The other thing that I need here, so I have the uh, coordinates of the center, uh, still datum here, I have the direction, the other, uh, and the distance, offset distance, that's five miles. Um, the other, um, now what I need here is that uh, radius um, or radial uh, of the feature. So I already clicked on the calculation. So the radial of the feature is basically the radius of this circle or the, the radius of the extent, sorry, the radius of the uh, maximum possible extent um, that represents this, this town. And the extent is a circle because it's easier to, um, to measure uh, a distance than if we have a very precise shape around. Um, first of all, we don't know what is the precise extent of, of Augusta. Or even if we would have had a precise uh, shape, um, in the end, we, we would uh, use a circle that, that is overlapping with, with, um, with the extent of the town. So anyways, this radial of feature is basically the radius of the circle. And again, my, my shape there, my polygon is not, a, it's not, a, it's not a, a circle. I apologize for that. Okay, the uh, measurement error, in this case, I assumed it was zero. Um, I assumed that five miles driving uh, should not should not have um, errors. 
uh, it might it might have, but uh, in this case, I assume zero. Um, and then precision, I put it at half mile uh, because the distance is um, is uh, five miles. So it's I think it's pretty conservative to put a precision of um, half mile. Okay, so when we did this, when I did this and I hit calculate, now the uncertainty is um, eleven thousand meters or um, eleven point five kilometers. So this is quite different from that that um, detailed description of uh, of distance on a road that we had uh, for that specimen. So this particular locality description um, has an uncertainty associated with um, with the various uh, measurements that we have here, uh, has an uncertainty of 11.5 kilometers. So if we are to use this, um, this, these uh, coordinates, this record, the latitude and longitude of this record with world clean data, which is the most <laughs> widely used uh, data set, um, we are introducing error because we don't know, there could be many one kilometer pixels um, where this, this um, occurrence was observed or the specimen was collected um, and there's no way we can we can make it more uh, less uncertain or um, with less errors. So basically, what we did is um, this is one thing that I forgot to mention. Basically, in this case, what we did is not only uh, did we calculate the uncertainty, but we also have a new latitude and longitude or adjusted latitude and longitude. So. Um, these um, coordinates of latitude and longitude are, are the um, estimated latitude and longitude five miles north of uh, Augusta with an uncertainty of about 11 kilometers because again, the, the direction precision is, is low. It just says north. It doesn't say north, northeast. Um, I have uh, rather, it's not a big town, but it's still, you know, 4.5 uh, um, miles uh, in radius. So these are errors that are um, adding up to the uncertainty associated with the calculated latitude and longitude somewhere five miles north of, of Augusta. So that's why it's important to to do this kind of work. Um, and whenever we download, um, now you know that whenever you download uh, GBIF data, uh, GBIF records, and you see the uncertainty there, it was calculated like this or in a man manner similar to this. Um, so it's not, um, it's tedious work. It's not easy work. Okay, so in order to do this, um, what in order to uh, calculate uncertainty of uh, georeferencing of, of uh, latitude and longitude or coordinates, you need to use uh, the georeferencing calculator. And then depending on what, uh, what the locality is, uh, the locality description, the text, uh, you, you will probably need to uh, calculate the, um, the radius of uh, that named place or feature, uh, a, a city, a national park, whatever it is, uh, you will have to uh, measure its extent or this um, radius, and uh, which goes into the georeferencing calculator. And, and then, of course, you need the coordinates, latitude and longitude of that named place or feature, and um, and you need measure um, error of uh, measurements. So this is not this is for each, for every locality, <laughs> um, this means a lot of work. So make sure you, you budget uh, enough or a lot of time for this particular task. Now, I, uh, for, to find the um, latitude and longitude of that town, that named place, I just use Google Maps, but um, you can use Google Earth, but there are also online gazettes and actually the Every time, most of the times that I that I did georeferencing, I used uh, online gazetteers, which are lists of of named places uh, with 
um, latitude and longitude. So the latitude and longitude of named places. Um, it's, and and I, I also used um, digital at, a digital atlas, for example. There are a couple of um, online gazettes that I'm, I'm listing here that are, um, <clears throat> or at least have been uh, widely used in the past. The first one, the GeoNet name server, is uh, maintained by the, um, now I can't remember the, uh, the institution <laughs> in the uh, United States. Uh, the other one is, is um, more of a crowdsourcing kind of, kind of uh, it's not associated with an institution, the second uh, source. Interestingly, the GeoNet name server today, when I checked it, didn't work for US uh, places and Canadian places. It worked for Romanian places. I'm from Romania. It worked, I checked Mexico, I checked Brazil. Um, for some reason, US and Canada were, were down, were not working um, when I searched for named places. But anyways, so it's a global, these are global uh, databases. And then there are, there are um, databases, gazetteers, um, digitized gazetteers for for more regional for countries or um, um, or one country <laughs> uh, in particular. So I have a um, slide at the end of the presentation with, with a bunch more uh, resources. Okay, so in a nutshell, it is hard to do georeferencing um, because it is, it is um, you have to be very detailed oriented and um, it takes time. So those of you who are using GPS or are <laughs> using data that has, that comes, that have GPS coordinates, you might be jumping with joy now thinking, I am so lucky I don't have to do this. I don't have to do the georeferencing. Um, but you are only <laughs> in a better position <laughs> if you have the data and the GPS accuracy of both of those GPS coordinates. If, um, so if you do have, um, this is the georeferencing calculator again, if you do have the um, GPS and, and datum, what, what we see is, um, so now in the georeferencing calculator, the locality type is coordinates only. We have the GPS coordinates. The source of coordinates is GPS. Um, and then the datum is here, and I put 10 meters um, GPS accuracy. Now, if you're under a thick, not a thick, but a closed canopy uh, forest, um, the GPS accuracy uh, drops. But in any case, with a GPS accuracy of 10 meters and with the datum known, uh, WGS84, uh, yes, indeed, you have an uncertainty of 24 meters. That is pretty, pretty uh, awesome. But if you don't have the datum and GPS accuracy, say someone gives you um, their data collected 10 years ago, and they forgot to take, they forgot to write down the uh, data and GPS accuracy. Um, the georeferencing calculator, then you, uh, you use it without the datum, so datum is not recorded, and the GPS accuracy is not provided. You don't know what's the G GPS accuracy. Uh, in this situation, those valuable, beautiful <laughs> GPS coordinates are not that um, uh, certain, they have an uncertainty of 2.6 uh, kilometers. So this is not that great, uh, but it's important to know that again, here is, you know, if we use the, um, the most used um, world clean, um, most used source of uh, environmental data or climatic, climatic data, world clean at one kilometer, our, um, GPS coordinates without datum and GPS accuracy don't have the right uncertainty for environmental data with one kilometer resolution. So we always have to match the uncertainty of our georeference to uh, match it with the, um, or to the uncertainty, sorry, not uncertainty, but the uh, grain or resolution of environmental data. So, GPS coordinates doesn't necessarily, having GPS coordinates doesn't necessarily mean that, that we have um, data with low uncertainty. 
Okay, so we kept talking about datum, um, and I'm uh, giving you a very uh, brief definition of a datum. A datum is needed to define the uh, origin, what is the origin and the, of, a, of a coordinate system, and the uh, orientation of latitude and longitude lines. So here in, uh, on the right side, you see um, the geographic coordinate system, the latitude and longitude, um, that has, uh, we, we work in degrees, I mean, not we work, but the latitude and the geographic coordinate system um, uh, works in uh, angular uh, units of measure. So degrees, you see here, uh, 55 latitude, 60 degrees longitude, uh, but it needs a prime meridian uh, and um, a prime meridian over here and the equator, of course, um, a prime meridian and a datum. So the datum, again, um, specifies for a particular um, coordinate system or a, a map projection, uh, what is the origin. So in, um, in geographic coordinate system is over here. What is the origin and the orientation going north, south, uh, east, west, orientation of uh, latitude and longitude lines. So any kind of spatial data, any kind of map will have a datum. And you just have to um, pay attention, find that metadata, metadata, find in the metadata what is the datum of, of, the, of the spatial data that, that you are using. Okay, so <clears throat> to, just to go back to where we started, um, the, uh, what was uh, discussed last week, the, um, the data overview and the data sources talked about Town and John among other things, they, they mentioned uh, locational uh, errors, the uh, lack of precision or the coarse resolution of, of occurrence data, and then the importance of having uncertainty and datum. And datum is, un, um, the lack of, of datum uh, increases the uncertainty, but the importance of having this uncertainty associated with latitude and longitude that we use in uh, in um, ecological niche modeling. So thinking back or thinking broader, uh, stepping um, back from, from talking about um, georeferencing just for, for a minute here. So species occurrence data that we use in uh, ecological niche modeling uh, is represented or are the occurrence data are represented by um, museum, uh, uh, specimens, we might use um, citations that we find in the literature, in a monograph, or paper, um, or papers, or an atlas, and then we might be using surveys. So basically, occurrence data are quite um, diverse, or can be quite diverse from, a, uh, from various sources of uh, uh, information. So we, we should always check for uh, outliers for errors. Uh, Town mentioned errors. Um, John mentioned errors in his talk. Um, and I know Town, um, the Town is covering the uh, cleaning of, of occurrence data, so you'll hear more about uh, outliers. But yes, because we have, we use um, data that are uh, collected in various ways, we do need to check for outliers, we need to check for taxonomic errors and many more. Again, I'm sure Town is, is going to cover um, these, these types of cleaning. But we, we do, when we find errors, we can fix in some cases, not always, but in some cases we can fix the errors. So in the case of a latitude, uh, in the case of um, errors related to the latitude and uh, longitude assignment. Mm -hmm. So we have the locality description, the one that I gave you somewhere in Georgia, but maybe the latitude and longitude uh, place the loc uh, the, that um, occurrence or that specimen somewhere in, I don't know, in the ocean or somewhere, uh, somewhere wrong. What we can do is um, instead of just getting rid of that, of that uh, point, of that data point, what we can do is we can reassign, based on the locality description, we can reassign the latitude and longitude and calculate the uncertainty. So that's the georeferencing. Then, um, as John mentioned, and I'm, 
I repeated <laughs> a couple of times uh, already. There are many GB records that don't have um, full georeference. So they might not have, they might have latitude and longitude, they might not have uncertainty, or they might not have latitude, longitude, and uncertainty. Um, so again, for those specimen, for those uh, data points, records, uh, wherever you get them from, GB4 or other databases, uh, don't, don't discard them. A check, they don't have latitude and longitude, don't discard them. Check the, the full um, record, so the locality description, and then that locality description, if it is detailed enough, we can georeference, we can assign latitude and longitude, and we can calculate uncertainty. This is one area that, um, in the development of an ecological niche modeling, that I think gets um, discarded <laughs> or gets overlooked or gets jumped over, uh, which is making use of all data that, that we, we download. Well, not all data, but all data that we can make use. So instead of um, filtering our records based on whether they have latitude and longitude, we should look at those records. They don't have latitude and longitude. Let's check those records and let's see if we can actually use them if we sit down and uh, assign latitude and longitude and uncertainty, or in other words, georeference. So, Yes, it is hard work, um, and there is an app for everything these days. Isn't there something that we can use, some automated way that we can use to georeference occurrence data? Well, there is, um, there is one tool, um, and so we are going to go back to this locality description that we used uh, throughout the, um, I used throughout the presentation, and uh, this, this automated and I put in quotation marks you'll see why it's not fully automated but there's a uh, there's this tool called geolocate now um, geolocate was um, designed was um, created a long time ago I think even before or maybe at the time I started grad school so in the early 2000s and it was um, it was um, developed at Tulane University to georeference fish um, collections, uh, localities or specimens in, uh, from uh, fish collections. They work very well for, um, they work well for um, stream data, for um, road intersections, types of, of uh, data that, or types of, um, sorry, types of locality descriptions that um, are common in fish collections. Now it's not just for <laughs> it's not just for ichthyologists or not just for fish collections. This can be used for anything, for any kind of locality description. But there are there are some some. Um, that's why I said it's uh, I put in quotation marks automated. There are some post processing steps that you have to do. So this is again it's an online um, tool. I provided a, a, a link or the website at the bottom of the slide. Um, so this is what the, the website looks like, the tool looks like when you go on that, on that website. And then um, one of the, um, so the menu here has one of the entries is geolocate web clients. So when you click, when you click on the geolocate web clients, um, this is the window or this is the page that opens. So what you see is, Standard client, so under web-based clients, you see standard client batch, and then collaborative georeferencing client. I'm not going to talk about that, only these two. So when you uh, click on the standard client, uh, what you see is, um, well, a map, of course, a world map. But then over here, um, there is um, a place to put your locality description or your locality string. Now the batch client uh, looks different because it doesn't have that locality string and as the name says it or the um, um, label it will do batch processing or many localities um, at the same time um, in a shape file uh, sorry in a csv file 
So the uh, formatting instructions for the CSV file are um, right here under the, uh, the batch client. Definitely click on that and definitely <laughs> use that file formatting. Otherwise, the batch process will not, uh, will not work. So if we, if we go to the standard client, not the batch client, I only have one locality description. What we do is in that locality string, and I, I magnify that, that, that box, in the locality string, I put the, the description uh, or the string uh, of the locality I'm trying to, to georeference, and then I added the state here, and I had to, I had to select the country. Now, if you, if you do batch processing, obviously, you, you don't click on these, on these menus, but I only have one. Okay, so I, um, I did this, <laughs> and I have uh, five possible, it says down here, five possible locations found. Uh, and I, um, I have this uh, crazy shapes, purple shapes, to indicate the, or to draw attention to the, attention to the pins the, loc the possible locations that geolocate found. Now, um, I have not investigated <laughs> in detail what happened here, but I'm assuming that the locality string, the parsing or the, um, the separating of information here by, the, by geolocate uh, was, was difficult, uh, maybe because um, there is, um, there is, there, there's, a road, a wheelless uh, road somewhere here or somewhere there. Um, so I didn't, I didn't check. But this was just to illustrate that even though it is automated in the way that, and it provides an uncertainty, sorry, I forgot to mention, um, there is uncertainty over here. So it provides you the latitude and the longitude. I don't know if you can see my, my cursor, um, my mouse. Um, it provides the latitude and lo longitude and then the uncertainty associated with with a locality description, depending which one you are clicking on, these, these five possible um, results or locations found. So, so it is automated in the way that it, you, don't, you don't use the georeferencing calculator. There is a calculation in the background of uncertainty that is happening, but you still have to sift through these possibilities. Um, of which which of these uh, five locations is actually the location that that is most likely to be the location of of this locality description. So um, it's not perfect, and um, I I briefly mentioned to John that I that I intended to show geolocate, and he did say that there are. There are some limitations and errors that um, that makes um, geolocate not the perfect tool. So it doesn't. Um, again, it's not uh, automated. It has it has um, uh, some some um, some issues with <laughs> with um, making sense of the locality string. Okay, so finally, I wanted to show you uh, to give you a list of georeferencing. Uh, resources that I already some I already mentioned in the in the talk. So first, and maybe I would say foremost, <laughs> um, first uh, the georeferencing calculator and the manual. Please read the manual. Don't just click on the <laughs> on the drop down menus. Uh, it is it is very important to understand uh, each parameter and what to assign to each parameter. What what value to assign to each parameter. So spend time, like I said. I spent a lot of time on the georeferencing uh, calculator manual a long time ago when I was uh, when I was in grad school. So study the manual before you use the calculator. Um, there, uh, there is um, from from these projects, Manis, Herpnet, and Ornis, which were massive projects, massive georeferencing projects of um, of museum collections of mammals, herbs, and, and birds. Uh, so from these massive projects, long, many years, um, and hundreds of people, um, georeferencing guidelines were written. Uh, so you can go to this website. It's not, um, 
it's a it's a static i don't think it has been uh, it has been revised but i i still think it's a it's a um a good um source of information so the georeferencing guidelines the most the most up to date the best one will be this um the uh revised georeferencing best practices um manual or or, or guide, guidelines um they uh john told me that they will be uh the fine the there's a draft <laughs> uh circulating and the final um manual will be hopefully <laughs> available soon uh will be uh posted on uh gbf website and then i lastly i i, I the last bullet point is uh an exhaustive um a very long, very comprehensive list of resources, um, the georeferencing resources at the bottom of, of this um, slide. Again, this was associated with HerpNet, the project. Uh, so some of the links are not updated, but at least you can see, um, you can search for or Google for that, for a particular uh, resource that is listed uh, there and find the updated, the new, the new link for, for some of the resources I noticed that the links uh, are not are not um, correct anymore have not been updated. Okay, so I understand this is something that very few people want to do, <laughs> but uh, uh, but it is important. Georeferencing is important because it affects the the quality of our models. So I wanted to finish with uh, with a um, humorous list uh, that. Uh, <laughs> that um, indicates that pre sometimes precision, too much precision is also, uh, is also uh, not that great. So uh, this is uh, actually, um, I think in the best practices, I don't remember which, the, if, if it was in the georeferencing guidelines, the quick guideline or in the best practices, but um, I, I was amused that being too uh, obsessive with precision uh, is, is not, uh, <laughs> is not needed or necessary. Well, I hope, I hope people will um, do georeference and will pay attention to uncertainty of, of localities um, before, before running models because they do affect, um, affect, affect the, uh, the performance and the quality of the models that we produce. So that's it.